And welcome back. This is another crossover episode, Locked On Chiefs, Locked On Broncos. I am Chris Clark. He is Sayer Bettinger from Locked On Broncos. We are going to be talking about this Broncos game. Uh, before we do that, thank you for listening to Locked On Chiefs and Locked On Broncos, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for always mo- making Locked On Chiefs and Locked On Broncos your first listen every day. If you haven't listened to another show, maybe go check out the NFL Draft Show. Ryan's on there. You can ch- check out Locked On NFL. They have all the different sports covered as well. Don't forget, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube as well. I am your host, Chris Clark. On Twitter, it's Chris Clark NFL. Like I said, Sayer Bedinger. And we're going to be talking about this game. I want to tell you really quick, Crossover Thursday is presented by our friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take 60 seconds or less to enter. It's that easy. We love Price Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's pricepicks.com, promo code locked on. Sayer, I feel like we were just here a couple of weeks ago. Oh, wait, we were. We were. But there's right. been so much that's changed. And just this week, really, even. So I'll let you go ahead and start. What is the news of the week for the Broncos? Oh, well, you know, it's been a pretty quiet week over there in, in Denver. Just, uh, you know, the, the head coach no longer there, Nathaniel Hackett. I think a lot of people wanted to talk about the fact that Broncos moving on from him after this season, but instead he kind of became one of very few people actually in, in the last like almost 30 years. I think there's just been two or three head coaches in their rookie season on the job fired before their first year was over. One of them being yep. obviously Urban Meyer. Last year, we all know that was a disaster, completely different to the one with Nathaniel Hackett in Denver. But I think at the same time, you know, you look at the situation with the Broncos, nothing has worked out from week one. You go back to that Seattle game, week one, the loss on the 64-yard field goal attempt late in regulation after you'd really burned a lot of your clock, after you'd wasted your timeouts, you didn't put the ball in Russ's hands after signing him to that mega deal. Obviously, a lot has transpired in the last 17 weeks, 16 weeks, but it was clear that Nathaniel Hackett wasn't the right fit for the Denver Broncos. We actually learned Jerry Rosberg, the the interim head coach who has, he's been an NFL coach or just a football coach for a very, very long time. Uh, he, he talked at his introductory press conference about how he's been best friends with John Harbaugh for 30 years. They've been coaching in this league together for a really long time. He's a really respected guy around the league. The Broncos hired him after that week one debacle to be to be the game management consultant, right? But Nathaniel Hackett struggling with, you know, his guys getting delay of game penalties, not getting the play call in on time, uh, struggling with the timeouts and clock management, things like that. So you hire a guy to come in and fix that. So Jerry Rosberg, the interim head coach of the Denver Broncos, wasn't with the team since January, like a lot of the coaching staff, wasn't with the team during training camp, the offseason. He joined the team a couple of weeks in, And initially that was pitched as Nathaniel Hackett making the hire, right? He's realizing, oh, I I, I struggle with game management. I struggle with this. In reality, what we found out from Rosberg is that general manager George Payton actually made that call. So you can't help but wonder how long has George Payton known that Nathaniel Hackett wasn't the guy. If he's calling a guy like Jerry Rosberg in to come and kind of fix a lot of things, you know, from a game management perspective, how long has he known? So that's all encompassing the big stories of the week is kind of two wrapped up in one, or maybe, maybe it's even more than that, right? You lose the blowout game to the Los Angeles Rams and you fire Nathaniel Hackett shortly thereafter. The ownership group is embarrassed. George Payton is embarrassed. You replace Hackett for the interim with, Jerry Rosberg and he comes out and meets the media very very interesting dude he had like a 13 minute literally monologue uh, to open up the press conference and just a a lot of things to say a lot of things that he's done doing differently already he's already fired two assistant coaches it's going to be an interesting offseason in Denver but you know what it's hard to even wrap your mind around the fact they've still got two games left including this road matchup against the Chiefs you know, you bring up a lot of interesting points, and the one thing I will say that you didn't mention, and I understand why you didn't mention it, I, I'm i not saying Hackett deserved to continue to be the coach. I think that he's made plenty of mistakes on his own. 
But I really think that they made a horrible mistake with Russell Wilson, and they're going to be paying for it for a couple of years. Uh, we will see if they're able to find somebody that can step in and actually correct some of his things from last year. But it sure looks like he is not the same player he was uh, when they traded for him or what they thought that they were going to get when they traded for him. And that's a big problem going into next year for Denver. When I look at the Chiefs, and I've said this for weeks now, and I hate being a broken record, it's about getting healthier and chasing the number one seed. But I want to make a little bit of a pivot this week and say I still think that's the number one story for Kansas City. But I think that you could say one of the bigger stories of the week for Kansas City is you had two teams in the division, and you could argue three teams in the division, go all out trying to chase Kansas City, and the best they can do is be three games back with two to play. And that's just one of the teams. And you have the Broncos who have already fired their head coach. They have a QB that they can't get rid of because it would cost $105 million against the cap to cut him right now. And you have the Raiders who are basically benching Derek Carr, which means his career in Vegas is more than likely over. Yeah, isn't that crazy to think about, right? I, I mean, at least I guess the, it, the Chargers, you know, making the playoffs is something. It's a step in the, the right direction, I guess, for all these teams that made all these moves. But really, I mean, remember the moves the Chargers made, right? Khalil Mack and J.C. Jackson and some of the other ones that they made. Well, J.C. Jackson's not even playing, so it's kind of fascinating. They just kind of gotten better, I guess, as Herbert has gotten better, may win a couple of those close games. But that's kind of been the story for all these AFC West teams again, hasn't it? I mean, you look at the Broncos and the Raiders and even the Chargers, the difference between those three teams and keeping up with Kansas City or not doing so, as we've seen, is their ability to win close games. Like the Broncos are three and eight in one score games. The the Raiders or, have been or stay healthy. terrible. Or stay healthy, exactly, which as we talked about off the air, the Chiefs have you know barely anyone on the injury report compared to 16 guys for the Denver Broncos on Wednesday. So it's one of those things where it's just like, what what do you do? You know, how do you are we even getting a clear look at what these teams envisioned? I don't know that that's necessarily the case because you and I talked about it, even with Derek Carr and the Raiders. It's kind of like, man, he kind of got a raw deal there with Josh McDaniels and even the previous you know, regime kind of hanging him out to dry. So previous couple. For that time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he has not had a good defense. He's not had a great situation with his head coach for several years. And uh, I'm not saying he's a great quarterback. I'm not saying he's a good quarterback. I just think that he's gotten the raw end of the deal when it comes to what he could have been. He took him to the playoffs last year. And that's after the whole, you know, getting rid of uh, Gruden in mid season. So, uh, but we're here to talk about the Chiefs and Broncos, and we will be getting back to that here in just a moment. But before we get there, I want to tell you about our friends over at Audible. Audible is releasing a new slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you're able to find an episode from the league available as a bonus episode on Locked On NFL. This episode is brought to you by Audible, narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman and sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks, the league is in an eight-part docu-series about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to the American to America's favorite sport, pro football. You won't want to miss these untold stories spanning from the 1940s all the way through the present. Our bonus episode is called The Way of the Cowboy, and is an incredible story of how the 1977 Dallas Cowboys brought in Bruce Lee's protege to teach their defense martial arts, ushering in a new approach to the way the league trained and Tom Bahali took that to another step for Kansas city. Just throwing that in there. Each story offers equal parts, history, entertainment, and social commentary head over locked on NFL for a bonus episode of the league or catch the full series. Wherever you get your podcast available now audible, get in the game. All right, Sayers. So a lot more to talk about, about this Broncos and chiefs matchup. And quite honestly, this is going to be intriguing to see what the Broncos do because they have, quite honestly, they have nothing to play for other than maybe spoiler and playing for jobs for next year. Right. It, it, that's how it feels, doesn't it? And, and right now, you know, you look across the league and you look across the last few seasons. One of the things that you often see, I, in my opinion, at least maybe maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe somebody's actually keeping an official stat for this. But at some point, there's like the uh, rally around the interim coach 
game or two, you know, and we've seen actually this year, like the Indianapolis Colts went into Las Vegas and got a win. I'm not saying they went out and just beat like these, the, the elite of the elite in the NFL. But when Jeff Saturday took over, they went and got a win in his first game. The, the Carolina Panthers with Steve Wilkes. I mean, you could argue it's been even better than just one game of rallying around the interim yep. coach. Like they've played, they, they may win the NFC South uh, as bad as that division has been this year. They've got a chance. So it's kind of going to be interesting to see what do the Broncos do in game one or even I suppose next week against the Chargers with Jerry Rosberg. Will there be that sort of rally around the interim head coach game? that you see a lot of times from, from teams. The Broncos had it happen to them last year when Rich Bisaccia took over for John Gruden. The, the Raiders all of a sudden looked like a play, and they became a playoff team. So obviously that's not in the cards for the Denver Broncos, but you would like to see a bit of renewed focus after the team clearly was just uh, all out of sorts against the Los Angeles Rams on Christmas Day. I was telling Cody after the game, Chris, I, I, I was embarrassed. I had to watch that game with my family who doesn't watch every Broncos game with me. I'm like feeling responsible or something. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing Russell Wilson again in this game. I know he's coming off of that three interception performance against the Rams. Just an ugly, ugly game in a season full of bad games, right? It's, it's not been good. He he's shown like the, the Broncos general manager, George Payton and the owner, Greg Penner, they talked at a press conference earlier in the week. They've seen flashes from Russell this year, just hasn't been consistent and they need him to be consistent. I think you need to see something like that. Remember the second half and starting really at the end of the second quarter, the last time these two teams played, that's when the, was maybe the best we've seen Russell Wilson play all year. And so maybe, could he play like that over the course of three, maybe even four quarters, dare I say, in this game? That's the key matchup for me. Russell Wilson against that Kansas City defense. Obviously, the Broncos have nothing left to play for in terms of postseason, but you're getting an evaluation mode for next year. You, the head coach, it's not going to be Jerry Rosberg in all likelihood, but at the same time, you want to see how this team rallies around the interim head coach, how they play knowing that man heads are heads are starting to roll in Denver right they they're they're serious about making changes how does russell wilson the leader of the team the qb of the team how does he respond after i mean he deserves a lot of responsibility for the fact that the head coach just got canned yeah and i have to wonder is he one does he take the responsibility he deserves to take two how is his team going to rally around him because you watched on the field or on, sorry, on the sideline, the backup QB get into it with the offensive line. That's not a good sign. And Russ ended up going over there and talking to the offensive line. And I don't know if they got it straightened out. Hopefully they can get it figured out. But there's a lot of questions going into this game. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure where I would want to go with one of the key matchups to this game for me. And it's not because I don't think that the Broncos don't have good players. It's because I'm not sure what the Broncos scheme is going to be in any sense. Defensively, you think you know what you're going to get. But is the head coach going to have a, an effect on what the defense coordinator is going to be calling? And it's a different head coach now. How is the offense going to change? That's the fascinating thing about this is Kansas City and Andy Reid game planning for a coach that they don't really have that much information for. So I guess that's really my key matchup. How is Andy Reid? How does Steve Spagnuolo? How does Eric Bieniemy and Patrick Mahomes and Justin Reid and, and Frank Clark and Chris Jones all get ready for a team where they know a lot of the players, but are they going to be doing the same things that they've been doing over the past couple of weeks or the last time they played them? It could be completely different. Uh, obviously, with, with it just happening this week, you're not going to be able to change the entire offense or entire defense, but you can put in plays that are going to be way different than what you've done. And that'll be fascinating to see how the Broncos respond to that as well. We know is zero ever the defensive coordinator who, I mean, his defense, a lot of mixed results the last time these two teams played, right? It felt like the chiefs were en route to, you know, scoring 50 points in the first half, the last time they played. And then Patrick Mahomes throws three interceptions. So it was a, a bit of give and take there from the Broncos defense. And frankly, we've seen a little bit more of that than we would like over the last handful of weeks. Although, Pre prior to the Rams game, they had been turning the ball over at a very high rate, eight interceptions in three games leading up to that Rams game. I was feeling pretty confident going up against Baker Mayfield playing in a scheme that is zero ever 
knew really well from his time in Los Angeles that the defense was at least going to be able to keep the Broncos in a tight game at the very least. But now we're going to see, like you said, how does Jerry Rosberg manage? I think that he's going to give Ezero Evero the ability to keep doing what he's doing. He was very complimentary at his press conference of, of Evero and, and, Frankly, Evero turned down the interim head coaching job. The Broncos think very highly of him. So we know he's well-respected in Denver. He's well-respected around the league. I think he's going to continue doing what he's been doing this year. And I hope his players get up and, and really play hard for him as he continues. He may have a shot at being a head coach somewhere. Maybe not this year, but for sure next year. So I hope the players respond in this situation, and I think they will. It's it's one of those things that, you're, like you said, what do you really expect? Do we expect the Broncos to come out throwing the ball a ton? Do we expect them to come out trying to run the ball a ton? What are we going to see with a new head coach in place, how, he's, how differently he's going to do things? That's going to be interesting to see for sure. Is there anything else from the Kansas City Chiefs side of thing that you're looking forward to seeing? You know, honestly, I think the other part of it that I'm really looking forward to seeing is can you continue to get Kadarius Tony more involved in the offense? You saw him play very few snaps last week. Uh, and it, it, he was effective. He got a touchdown on, I think, one of the first snaps he's on the field. And while it isn't a fantastic play, it's a great play that shows his how he can be so effective in this offense and how he can be so dangerous because he is able to see the cutback lanes and it is a perfect type of play for him to be able to use his skill set. So can you continue to get him involved? If McCall Hardman is back, how do you continue to get both of those guys involved in this offense? Because they both bring dimensions to this offense that they haven't had for weeks. And that would be a huge addition for Kansas City to get going. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be a lot better weather, at least this weekend, than it was this past weekend uh, with 10 degree weather. So I'm really curious to see what they do on offense. I think the defense played very well against Seattle. I think that they, they were able to shut down the Seahawks. Uh, and, and really it was a one score. Or it was a, you know, they held them to single digits when it really mattered. Uh, it was a garbage time TD at the end that kind of made, you know, got them to 10 points. So uh, something to watch going forward, how this Chiefs team really attacks and, and goes up against a team. The Broncos are, I need to be careful how I say this, but they're a little bit of a better case study when you start looking at premier players at the receiver positions, because I think Sutton is a fantastic wide receiver. Jerry Judy is a fantastic wide receiver. The question is, is can Russell Wilson deliver? Because Kansas City is going to be seeing another team that has two fantastic wide receivers in the playoffs in the Bengals, but I don't think Russell Wilson is anywhere close to what Joe Burrow is, and that's going to be a big factor in this game is can they get the passing game going in Denver? Because if they can – that I'll give Kansas City problems. Well, we're going to get into some predictions for this game. Although, I mean, I, I suppose, Chris, I don't know. What, what do we predict? I guess we're going to find out here in a bit. But before we get to our predictions for this Broncos Chiefs matchup in week 17, let me tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball, World Cup, we've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love podcasts and you're listening to this one today, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Did you know that driving high is considered being under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, even your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed so even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high you're not because the bottom line is if you feel different you drive different and driving high is driving under the influence so remember drive high get a dui paid for by nhtsa This is always the fun point of the show for me is I always like predictions because I like talking about what I think is going to happen. But you are the visitor. I will let you go first. What are you expecting in this game? 
And, and really, it's so much different than it was a couple of weeks ago because, I, in my mind at least, we just don't know what the Broncos are going to bring. Right, right. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I, I, I kind of gave my head and my heart prediction on both. I think that that's what I'm going to continue to do. That's what I love to do in these predictions. I don't like to be all doom and gloom because my official prediction for this game would be that the Chiefs win by 10 plus, right? I, I think that you'd be unwise to not be predicting that if you're if you're one of those people that likes to bet on sports games and you're betting the Broncos I mean I don't know I, I guess I just personally wouldn't go that direction but from a Broncos fan perspective for Broncos country what does your heart tell you about predicting for this game well your heart wants to see the Broncos win even if it's a tight game obviously you'd love to see a Broncos blowout win every single week but that's not going to happen in Kansas City in Arrowhead I think the best thing that you can hope for is a one score win or you you trade barbs throughout the game and get the last possession and kick a game winning field goal to take it at the end there really it's going to require that it's going to require the defense to show up in a much bigger and better way than they did against the rams and we saw against baker mayfield i think with with nathaniel hackett being fired the the wake up call is there for this team as if it wasn't already there right but we reached a, a low of lows on christmas day against the rams i think we see the broncos fight hard in kansas city i my official prediction would be if i was if i had to put like my name next to something i would probably say that the broncos lose this game by two scores but what what is what do i want to see what do i want to see happen what am i trying to manifest from the heart here chris i'm trying to manifest like a 27 24 broncos win can they do that I don't know. I'm not banking on it. I'm certainly not betting on it. But at the same time, you want to be able to see this offense bounce back, finish the season strong. You get two division games to do so. I, that would be, I think, the hope from Broncos country because there's not. it's not like you know they can get a better draft pick from losing this game. Their draft picks are going to Seattle. So you, you want to see the team win. You want to see Russell play well. You want to see the offense and defense do well. You want to see Jerry Rosberg rally the troops. That's what I think would be my prediction for this game. I like it. I, I understand where you're coming from, and I understand uh, I've been where you are. It's really hard sometimes when you feel like the team is probably destined to probably lose this game, not necessarily because of uh, anything else other than the talent differential between the two. Uh, you know, I really thought Russell was going to be a great addition. It hasn't worked out that way. Can they get it fixed? We'll see. Uh, I don't think you're going to see that this week. I think that's going to be something that they're going to have to work on next year uh, just because I don't think that Rosberg is going to be the guy that can go in and make things change uh, in one week. The one thing I want to see from Kansas City going into this game is can they take what the Rams did and find a way to beat the Broncos with it? And what I mean by that is the Broncos' defense is giving Kansas City fits at times. Uh, can Mahomes play a cleaner game? I think Kansas City wins. I would love to see Kansas City score 30 points, but it doesn't ever seem like they do in divisional games. It always seems to be closer. And with Mahomes throwing three picks last time, it makes me think about, okay, this game probably is going to be closer than I would like it to be. The other side of this for me, though, is I'm kind of glad that they fired Hackett when they did, not because I think Kansas City would have been necessarily lax going into this game, but the one thing that always seems to be an issue with this team is they lack the ability to put away teams that they should beat on a regular basis. And that, to me, the Broncos are a team that they should beat. Uh, so this is going to make them be more focused because they're not going to know exactly what's coming. They can have an idea of what they think may come, but they're not going to know what exactly is coming like they probably would have if, you know, nothing to hack it was still the head coach. So to me, I'm going probably 27-21 Kansas City. Uh, I really hate saying that when it comes to, the Broncos scoring that many points, but until this defense could put a couple of games together where they're doing the same thing and they're being uh, flying the ball like they were against Seattle, I'm going to probably figure that they're going to continue to allow teams to score points. And they get back Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy tore a new one after he got pissed off on the sideline the last game. So something to watch there as well. That would be fun. I mean, as sad as it sounds, three touchdowns with 21 points for the Broncos, that would be a welcome sight, I think, for the fans to see that, to see the offense operating that way. We just haven't seen it much this season. So 
I, I, I mean, you know, as far as the state of the team right now and how this game could affect it, I don't know that it affects it much. I know that Jerry Rosberg, this will be kind of my, my final say on the game and predictions and things. I know Jerry Rosberg came out at this press conference and talked about the importance of, you know, ending this streak against the Chiefs, which was kind of a breath of fresh air because we didn't hear that from Nathaniel Hackett. You know, he said, of course, it's important as a divisional game, a divisional opponent, but it, he wasn't necessarily out there like fired up to end the streak. But Jerry Rosberg made it a point to come out and talk about ending the streak, the losing streak, I mean, against the Kansas 14 City. games. 14 games. I remember the last time they won, too. I was very excited about it. I was living in a different city in a different state at the time, a week two Thursday night game. Bradley Roby scoop and score. It was a part of a very memorable season for the Broncos. But look, that was then. And, and who cares about what's happened in the interim? That's Jerry Rosberg's message. It's like, okay, the last 14 games, we need to end it. We need to stop it this weekend. It doesn't matter if we're 4-11. and 11. And I love that he came out and started talking about that because it's important for him as the, the guy that's leading the team these final two games to have that kind of mentality. Yeah, and I like what you said because it is important for Denver to get on the right track. I'm I'm hoping they don't do it this week uh, because I do agree with you. They need to try to get back to where they can compete in the division again. I think that makes all the teams in the division better if you have stronger teams in it. Uh, and honestly, I understand why you're saying what you said about the 21 points. But Kansas City allowed 28 the last time. So it's, it's really hard for me to feel like they're going to do a ton better if they cannot be consistent. And if they can be consistent this week, I will gladly uh, take it for that. So that's going to be it for us today. Thank you all for listening. We really do appreciate it. This is Locked on Chiefs and Locked on Broncos. This is your crossover Thursday episode. And we will be back to talk to you more about this game tomorrow.